From the skies, Nairobi looks perfect. But on a closer look, this is a city choking from the bad habits of the millions of residents who call this home or a place of work. Does anyone know what happens to it all? Sumu! Sumu! Kisungu! According to scientists, a good population of Nairobi and its environs have such chemicals in their bodies. The diseases, the money we are wasting in hospitals, is just because we have caused the problem. Fourteen for Sintika, one of the spectacular sites that decorate the Great Earth River, a water body that flows from the heart of Kenya. It cuts through one of the country's most scenic animal parks, Oldonyo Sabuk National Park, that boasts of wildlife such as buffaloes and olive baboons. The Earth River is a vast, beautiful, but tormented water body. Right here, the 14 Falls that ought to be a great tourist attraction, the environment is polluted and the water filthy. And the closer you get, the faster the falls lose the allure. A heavy stench takes over. The foam at the foot of the falls indicative that all is not too well. The waters are dying. The rivers have become garbage and poison rivers. This is all part of River Athi. We are here in Goliba, the border between Kiambu and Machakos counties. These residents are downstream and they know that something is out of place up the river. We come across these boatmen. They transport people and goods across the expansive river. We want to know why a river so rich as Athi appears so underutilized. What do you want to do? I want to do it. I want to do it. I for decades, even before colonialists came, Hundreds of years down the history lane, fishing along River Athi has been a lifeline running in families for generations. However, pollution and other human activities are overriding the river's natural capacity to provide clean water for drinking, agriculture, and wildlife habitat. James Munyao lives and works on the river in Goliba. <laughs> Lakini yeah. unasema tuangalie ndani. Eh. Yeah. Hali ilikuwa hivi. Eh, yeah, hapana. Mm. Maji ilikuwa safi. Si tulikuwa tunakunywa hata kitu wakunywa ilikuwa hapa. Mm. Kusota tunakunywa. Lakini sasa hawezi. Shida iko hapa. Huu uchafu ni toka. Ni 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 si wenzi tuseme kwa hivyo. Mm. Kutoka pande ya juu. Kutoka pande ya juu kipika ba ndonyo sabuku. Hapo mm -hmm. usafu una unaongezeka. Kwa majina naitwa Bosco Mutoa. Kazi yenye nashughulika nayo ya kufua samaki. Lakini shida yenye iko hawako hata. Mwanzo tunatafuta kutoka asubuhi sijapata hata saa hii saa saa saba hivi. Kutoka saa mbili sijapata chochote. Na matumaini ya kwamba nitapata tu. Mwanzo ndo kazi yangu. Mwanzo samaki zenye zimebakia ni ndogo tu. Ni ndogo tu. Sio wakati wenze, kuna wakati zilikuwa mingi lakini nao dizilipotea. Wakati wa kitambo tulikuwa tunakunywa hii maji. Lakini sasa hatuwezi tukaikunywa. Mwanzo ni chafu. Sasa hizi watu wakunywe. Eh. Vijana ambao kazi yao ni uvuvi. Eh. Wanaona shida sana. Wanaona zita sababu kuna wanakamata hii nini? Hii kamongo hii inaitwa nini? Kambala. Lakini kambala hali yake ni kukula chapu. Mhm. Mm 
Lakini samaki ile ngeke una ingine nyeupe inakuwa kubwa sana. Mm. Imepotea. Mm. Sababu ya ile nini ndawa inawekwa kwa chiwenzi. Let's demonstrate to you just how river Afi is dirty, especially where we are right now. Now, we have clean water. We've just bought it and I've taken at least a quarter of it. It's remaining three quarters. So, what next? We are going to fill this bottle again using water from this river and see what will happen. This is terrible. I can see something moving inside. Yeah. And the color has changed from colorless to green. Terrible. You can't take this one. Terrible. We collected a sample of water from this river and took it to the government chemist for analysis. After several weeks of waiting, we get results that indicate the water has high levels of grease and oils and hence not suitable for drinking. But the problem does not start here. We travel 86 kilometers to Ngong Hills. Tucked in the hills are several swampy areas. In the swamps are several springs. At one of the springs that is surrounded by turbines used by Kenya Power to harness wind power, young girls are busy fetching water for domestic use. They are irrepressibly cheerful young ladies. The flickering drops twinkle on the mouth of the water jerry can. We want to know how safe this water is. So we collected a sample and took it to the government chemist for testing and analysis. The aim was to identify and quantify the chemical components and properties of this water and see if it is safe for drinking. The government chemist in its analysis on our sample says the water is acidic but clean and can be allowed to interact freely with the environment. The water is rubber stamped safe for drinking. From the spring, water forms a stream that snakes down the hills where it gathers pace and volume, joined by tens of others bringing in the commodity. River Motwene, a tributary of Ngong River, is formed. But as the river goes down through Kenya's capital Nairobi, it undergoes an astonishing transformation. And by the time it leaves Kenya's largest informal settlement of Kibera, its color and content changes completely. This is a river covered in dirt. Inside here, all kind of rubbish. Shoes, plastic bags, bottles, football. In a nutshell, this is household. Rubbish. Ilikuwa watu wanaoga maji ilikuwa safi watu wanafua. Kini sasa hii unaweza fua? Uwezi fua? Caroline Oyuga remembers with nostalgia the days when Nairobi Dam was a source of fish and waters for swimming for the people of the city. Sasa dam imekuliwa kuliwa imeisha. Nyumba nyingi hizi unaona zote. Ukiambua mwisho wa dam hata haionekani. Samaki kama telepia zilikuwa zinapatikana. Watu wakua metengeza mabotu, wamama biyashara wakua nakuja kufanya nini? Kununua samaki. Ambapo wakati huo, hii club, silanga, sijina hito silanga nini hapa. Wazungu walikuwa na, wana patrol humu ndani na bots. Lakini sahi ya iwezekani, kwa sababu ya hile kwe kwe hile iko pale ndani. Do we really need to do a chemical analysis on this water to understand its content? I don't think so. Physical analysis is enough. Nairobi River and its tributaries of Ngong and Madare have borne the brunt of the recent urban explosion in Nairobi, a city whose population has nearly doubled in the last 20 years to 5 million. Unplanned growth has led to the use of these water bodies as dumping grounds for sewage and industrial effluent, almost 70% of the urban sewage flowing into the rivers. This is a dumping site at Riverbank in Embakasi, Nairobi. 
It looks like just garbage to the usual passerby. But here, they see food and money. Every day, tens of people from nearby informal settlements come here in the hope of scavenging food and anything else that might come in handy. <laughs> garbage dumps could provide a lifeline for people like Joseph Gishohi, who has an ambition of becoming a musician. He says he would have preferred trading in fish, not trash. But he knows that no aquatic life can survive in these waters. On the other side are shanties made of bricks, tins and iron sheets, metal scrap dealers and a middle class housing complex flanked by concrete walls that plunge into the water. A dark slurry with floating bits of plastic, cloth and rubber slowly passes downstream. So dirty is the river that even this Chinese contractor had the audacity to direct the waste from his machines into Ngong River at this bridge. People living in informal settlements dump their waste in the river. Most of it is plastic and won't degrade for decades. The rubbish starves the water of oxygen. Nairobi River is literally the sewer that carries away the waste from millions of people who live in catchment areas. There is no doubt that the people of the city are killing Nairobi River and its tributaries. The government of President Uhuru Kenyatta sees cleaning up Nairobi River and its tributaries as nothing less than a mission to reclaim the city's lost glory, a city whose meaning in the Maasai language is a place of cool waters. Launching the exercise last year, the government talked tough. Within uh, a few days, you are going to start seeing the fruits of what we would like to give Kenyans. And those who are a meeting will be taken to court. And several buildings erected along the riverbanks were brought down. But to date, so little has been done to warrant celebrations. In fact, experts say Nairobi River is more polluted today and its effects downstream are sickening. Environmentalists blame the failure of past cleanup efforts on a host of problems. The political clout of industries, contractor-driven projects, weak enforcement by pollution control agencies, and clashing government departments. But our investigations have established that efforts to clean up the city river have failed to navigate the politics of the city and multiple national government agencies. And so we came here with an aim of establishing the dangers thousands of factories in industrial area expose Kenyans to. We establish that most factories do not have effluent treatment capabilities and release toxic waste to the environment. In these buildings, thousands of machines operate 24 hours a day. Each of these factories produces waste filled with chemicals. <laughs> But before we go further, we encounter this blue colored substance running on the road and into Mukuru slums. Apparently, it's a burst sewer line emanating from these factories. Residents believe the blue dye is from a nearby textile factory. It has been like this since last year, we are told. And nothing seems to be happening. We take two liters of the dye for analysis. Serikali 
inachua imachi hiyo muta yote wamekaa hapa lakini hawacha suruisa between the industries and gong river is mukuru slums a populated informal settlement as we circle around industries to look for the passage through the area characterized by houses erected with iron sheets we get to this place a seeming junction of pipelines from the industries and something gets our attention a corroded concrete pipeline our suspicion is that this could be an indication of high acidity and presence of heavy metals we get a sample for testing and analysis we meet Sam Dindi founder of Mazingira Yetu magazine who is trying to fix environmental issues in informal settlements industrial waste from factories are channeled through mukuru slums and brings pollution with it he says ngong river would have been a permanent supply of water for the slum dwellers had it not been polluted to this extent the first point of pollution begins at our homes how do you dispose of our waste the moment you finish using that so where does the bottle go to we don't care second are the industries where does where does is, is there waste pretreated before being released to the river none of that happens everywhere we look people are interacting with the river water somehow nearby is an outlet from factories in industrial area clearly this is a major pipeline from the industries and with it untreated toxic chemical waste these channels are also open to us human effluent floating in water is the order here we got a sample the most annoying thing i've seen this ecosystem is is that there is no life form in the river the rivers are practically dead i've only been able to count two, two bird species a uh, pied wagtail and swallows nothing else there are several regulations that seek to streamline industrial waste management but the government does not just enforce them enough rogue industries have made gong river a playing field here the national environmental management authority says no industry in this area has been allowed to discharge waste directly into the river they are supposed to channel water through the sewer line to rye water treatment plant for treatment before discharge but a good number of factories circumvent this a strong smell of oil attracts us to this industrial outlet floating on top of the effluent are heavy traces of industrial oil <sighs> this is sinai area in mukuru slums in august 2011 a fire tragedy that left scores dead happened here oil leakage from the pipeline was given as the cause of the deadly inferno the analysis of our samples will take a month the water laboratory informed us that most of our samples had lots of dissolved solids and twice broke down the machines all the water sources were not suitable to interact with the environment some were contaminated with heavy metals most alarming were the results from the corroded pipeline it had been contaminated with chromium a heavy metal that is dangerous to human health the level of chromium found was 0.965 mg per liter nearly 9 times the recommended level of 0.1 mg per liter that's a heavy metal it kills it brings issues like cancer this river connects downstream to other river this is a major source of water in the downstream communities not even outside nairobi you go in chiru those other parts people are using that to to irrigate their crops so what does that mean i can assure you from where i sit those people are facing committee because this time around after the change of the law which required the authority to give an order to these companies to comply uh, section 146 of uh, water act 2016 allows us to go there with the police officers and arrest these people and take them to court directly indeed heavy metals like chromium are non biodegradable and so boiling water does nothing to them the same samples had higher levels of chloride ions than required 
2,680 milligrams per liter of chloride ions were found in the water against the required standards of 250 milligrams per liter. The level of total dissolved solids was found to be 6,460 milligrams per liter compared to a threshold of 1,000 milligrams per liter. This directly impedes absorption of oxygen and hence stops water from supporting aquatic life. Chromium pollution was also detected at the tail end of this industrial outlet. <laughs> Dangers of heavy metals are well documented, but no one is monitoring to what they are doing to people living along Nairobi River and Earth River downstream. In industrial area, all industries are connected to the sewer line. There is a sewer line there. What I'm saying, the sewer line might not be perfect, or it's not flowing the way it's supposed to. Some manholes are overflowing. Nema says it's hard to find the exact factories discharging waste into the river. They say many pipelines from thousands of industries in the area are interconnected, and this poses a challenge. They say for them to isolate individual companies, then pipelines here must be followed, which means roads and other infrastructure must be ripped off fast. I'm telling you, even a rudimentary uh, M&D engineering farm in this country, even plumbers, <laughs> live alone engineering firms, will be very willing to, to actually go and verify these things for them. Because they're the same guys who go when those same industries, uh, uh, now the waste is, uh, the system is blocked, they can't discharge onto the river. It is the same, same plumbers who go there and, uh, and clear the entire, the entire entourage. But residents claim that there is an unholy alliance between industries and NEMA and county government officials since companies continue to discharge dangerous chemicals into the river despite them making reports. How are people able to discharge onto the river without these people seeing? It is not possible. It is like hiding an elephant in your bedroom. They gave the example of this blue dye from a textile factory which has been here for several months. The government chemist found it to be highly acidic and had lots of oils and grease of about 0.839 milligrams per liter against the required nil. A month after we collected the sample here, machines from Nairobi water were brought in to reverse the situation. They spent the whole day, but at the end of it all, the blue dye full of fiber was still bubbling from the pipe underneath. But even as the government grapples with the problem of reclaiming Nairobi River and its tributaries, those living downstream along the river Athi are facing the consequences of pollution. Enoxicolia, Citizen TV.